Hey folks, uh, Scott here again. Now you should have just left Amy in unit five if you're seeing me. So welcome to module six. Uh, here I'll be discussing Silo Health's approach to integration. Uh, now this isn't meant to be a comprehensive guide for preparation and integration, but instead I'll talk about why prep and integration are important for someone choosing to have a psychedelic experience. Uh, I'll also talk about a little bit of an overview for, of our protocol for integration, and we'll talk about some of the more important ways that you can help support your peer after their journey. Again, this is not meant to be comprehensive, um, and I will go over some topics fairly quickly. Um, there is a lot more, and there is a lot more that you'll need to do in order to deepen your understanding of integration, but this will at least be a primer. Now. Several years ago, uh, I finally realized that I needed to ask for help. Now, I'd spent more than a decade treating the symptoms of PTSD through pharmacotherapy until it just wasn't working anymore. Um, I ended up finding that help in a cup of ayahuasca. Now, like many people before and after me, I found my way to a curandero in the Amazon looking for healing. And over the course of a few weeks, I experienced some profound changes and the release of many burdens that I did not know I was carrying. Um, I returned to my normal life in the bustling metropolis of Atlanta, Georgia, assured of my newfound wellness and promptly dismantled much of what had constituted my life. Within a few months, I'd quit my career and ended several relationships that I considered toxic. I felt unencumbered, um, but I'd soon find that that freedom came with a price and an ability to function. So what I lacked from my experience, I know this now, was an effective integration. Now, I've seen it more times than I'd like to recount while working in, as an organizer in the psychedelic space. When someone returns from a profound psychedelic experience, their entire world has changed. Uh, things that they viewed as normal or necessary uh, no longer have a hold on them. So they start to make changes, big ones, similar to my story. Now, fast forward a few months and these changes haven't led that person to a better place. So maybe they've decided they just need more medicine, so they keep going back to the well hoping for clarity, uh, but in just a relatively short time, this person has made themselves completely incompatible with their own reality. Then what happens? Depression and anxiety kick in. I thought I had it figured out. <laughs> At least that's what I said. And so this journeyer has not only missed the positive benefits of the psychedelic experience, but they've created new problems for themselves. So this is the definition of disintegration and what we hope to work against through education about integration practices. Now, not everyone's ex experience is going to be like mine. Not every psychedelic experience comes with the urge to immediately change things in such a drastic manner, but make no mistake, the experience will change you. Now, what I described in my own life was a haphazard integration that had negative consequences, where integration could have been used as harm reduction. Not to be all doom and gloom, but if you bypass integration, you do so at your own peril. Even if the changes to your psyche and that you express into your life can be considered minor. Now, some of the negative consequences of a haphazard or bypass integration include confusion about life activities. You may and should feel completely different about a lot of your life after your experience. Confusion about what changes need to be made and where acceptance is the best option are a part of your integration. Now, without help or a strong sense of self, this confusion can lead to bad choices or added trauma. Uh, integration helps you to navigate this confusion. Uh, another thing is repetitive journeys with no progress or frustration. Uh, Alan Watts is famously quoted as saying, when you get the message, hang up the phone. And what I believe he was referring to was that once you understand an insight or you've done the most good for yourself in your psychedelic journeys, it's best to step away until you need to seek more insights. Now at Silo Health, we believe that working with psilocybin is a tool that you have a relationship with and not necessarily a constant relationship. Believe it or not, most people who work with psilocybin only do so one to a few times in their life because that's really all they need. Unfortunately, some journeyers do not take the time to integrate their experiences and they look to more medicine to solve the problem. And this is not always the best way to work with psilocybin. As subsequent journeys stacked on top of each other typically results in more questions than answers. The divergent thinking that psilocybin experience gives you is most useful when you converge insight and crystallize what you've learned in the real world. So more is not always better. One last thing I'll bring up, and that's something that we've termed here at Silo Health as maladaptive ontological shock syndrome. So part of a very profound psychedelic experience is a change in how you view the world and yourself. 
Now, this is usually positive, and the majority of changes that occur in paradigm and worldview is adaptive and for the betterment of yourself and your community and the world at large. But for some, the experience can be so unsettling that it does not allow them to adaptively interact with objective reality, both short-term and long-term. So think about someone that you may have met in a medicine circle or a psychedelic society who just can't seem to square the life they live with what they've seen while working with a psychedelic. This person may, like I did once, drastically change their life in a way that does more harm than good. Now, they may completely disconnect from their family and the communities that they've been a part of and those that support them their whole life. Or this person may just be addicted to the psychedelic experience. Yeah, it does happen. Now, maladaptive ontological shock is certainly more prevalent among people who haven't hung up the phone, as Alan would say, and people who stack macrodose experiences in an attempt to find clarity. Now, it only takes one experience to shake someone at their foundations, and it's only through careful integration that these experiences become helpful. Now, Saad will be talking more about Moss in one of his units. Uh, so, you'll learn a little bit more about it there. Now, outside of what we've already explored as potential pitfalls of not integrating experiences, there are a myriad of other types of self-harm, physical and mental, that can be the result of a profound psychedelic experience. As a psilocybin peer supporter and the members of the psychedelic community, it is all of our responsibilities to watch out for each other and help where we can if someone's on the path to self-harm. As a silo health psilocybin peer supporter, we don't expect you to be capable of actively assisting someone in integrating their experience. However, we do feel that it's important for you to understand our model of integrating, uh, just so you can at least help someone that you're supporting in seeking out the assistance that they need and also caution journeyers about the importance of integration. When in doubt, refer out. Ultimately, integration is how your experience shapes your life after the experience has happened. So that integration manifests itself in changes that you may make and how you view the world and people around you. And it's how that experience shapes the person that you become. Beyond integration is harm reduction, we feel that integration is where you make the most of your experience for yourself, for your family, and ultimately for the greater community. Integration is important, not just because it can save you from circumstances that may worsen your situation and obstruct your healing, but also because integrating is what makes the experience worth it beyond the phenomenological, in the moment experience. So just as we see integration as the process by which you make meaning and use of your psychedelic experience, we believe that integration starts the moment you begin to prepare for your journey. So, as I talk about the different stages around and including dose day, I would invite you to think about integration less as something that happens after your experience, the way most people see it, and more about how the entire process unfolds. I may use the term integration process or just integration to describe this. A note about integration and why we believe a process is needed. Now, one of the more significant understandings that I've come to in working through traditional medicine workers in their communities is that integration, as Western cultures tend to see it, is not practiced to a great extent there. Now, this is not due to any oversight, but it's as a result of having these types of experiences already integrated into the collective understanding of the community. So integration isn't as needed because these cultures are already integrated. Uh, peer support is one step in a broader integration of psychedelic healing for our communities to move more towards this ideal state. Now, we tend to look at the integration process as a whole in well-established terms of pre, during, and post. Now, we'll discuss each of these stages today with a little primer on some of the things that you should be looking at with your journeyer. So starting with pre, or prior to the experience, uh, during this time as a peer supporter, you should be focused on understanding your peer and ensuring that they have a safe, useful experience free from any misunderstandings between the two of you. Some things to focus on during this time are going to be developing a therapeutic alliance with those who are helping. Um, for those of you that uh, don't really understand that term, a therapeutic alliance really is that basis of trust that you have with a person, whereas they understand that you are helping them in a non-hierarchical manner and that you are there to support them. Another thing that you should be doing during pre is pre-screening for contraindications and mental health status. So establishing a set and setting for a safe and supportive journey year is very important during this stage as well. Um, and if working with someone in a deeper capacity than peer support, you should be discussing your methods and the integration process. So this is a part of what we would call informed consent, 
where you're informing the journeyer how you're going to be working together and getting their consent on all of those terms. One last and very important thing that you should be doing before dose day is the setting of intentions and learning why are you doing this. So as a side note, intentions are what the journeyer would like to explore during their experience. Their expectations of the experience should not be that their intentions will be met on dose day. Let me say that again. Intentions are what they would like to have from the experience. However, you don't, do not want them to have the expectation that they will be met on dose day. A um, couple of other things, uh, establishing boundaries, rules, and expectations for the day of, which David covers more of these important steps in attending your peer, uh, should be done at this point. So during. So during is what we would refer to as the time frame starting with dosing and ending as the journeyer has exited the macrodose experience. Now during this time as a peer supporter, you should be more focused on harm reduction and safety. Noting any insights that are reflected by the journeyer, right? So being that uh, kind of catch all for what their experience and things that they are able to convey to you. Uh, having non-directive support during difficult moments, um, having assistance with aftercare instructions and capturing insights if necessary. So. You might have to write for them. So post, now this is after the journey has entered the afterglow stage. Now during this time as a peer supporter, you should be really focused on supporting your peer as they integrate their experience. So if assisting in a deeper capacity than peer support, an integration specialist would really be assisting with insight capture and meaning making. Uh, also the integration of insights through action setting where you bring those insights into the world, those actions following up and continuing to support. Now, post experience in our integration process can be the longest part for the journeyer because it really lasts until that experience has been fully integrated. Now, as a peer supporter, you may not be very active during this stage beyond supporting the journeyer if they need it. Um, for our integration specialists, this is really a time where you may have lengthy sessions with the journeyer, assisting them as long as they need the assistance in integration. Now, as a peer supporter, if somebody is really struggling with integration, again, we always suggest that you refer out. Right? And we can help to link people up uh, with either psychedelic therapists or folks that um, may work in a more spiritual manner uh, to help them with integration. Now, the reason why we do that is this is a very intimate process and has serious implications for the journeyer's life. And so it should only be approached with a really well-developed skill set in integration work. Now, how someone integrates is as personal as the experience. Uh, most journeyers that I've encountered use language uh, to integrate their experiences, um, whether that's through journaling, writing, poetry or fiction. Um, because we all share the use of language, this is readily accessible um, for most people. Uh, and it's a great way for them to externalize their experience and insights and to find meaning to express into their lives. But writing really isn't the only way. Uh, music, painting, visual arts, dance, uh, these are all languages of the body. And if you're more comfortable expressing through ways other than words, these can be very powerful. The thing about integration is it happens mostly on your own, even if you're working with someone trained in integration. So it's very important as a journeyer that you work with a language and method that is your own. Now at Silo Health, we believe that there can be adaptive and maladaptive integration behaviors. So just like with any major life event or even trauma, while there often isn't a clear path after a profound psychedelic experience, you should support positive changes and challenge impulsive behaviors where a positive effect is not obvious. Uh, as a peer, psilocybin peer supporter, you can help your journeyer by being a reflective presence when they verbalize actions that may be premature or maladaptive. So I'm gonna throw a couple of situations at you to ponder. Uh, when hearing from the journeyer um, you're supporting, uh, consider how you would best support them through their integration while being non-directive. I have to quit my job immediately. You know, my partner, family member, best friend, really doesn't understand me. I'm breaking up with them right now. I found my path. I'm selling all of my belongings and moving to Peru tomorrow. I'm not sure what that meant. I need to trip again and again and again and again. Now, think about how you would counsel a good friend that you care about if they came to you saying things like this without a psychedelic experience. 
understand that you may be the only person they're trusting with their major life decisions. Now, let's apply the same lens to the following statements and questions. I think that I'm not happy with my job, but I'm not sure what to do. You know, I realize that things aren't right with my partner. What do you think I should do? I can't live my life anymore. I need to change things. This culture is sick and I don't know how to be a part of it anymore. Help me. I had so many visions and I'm confused about what they mean. Should I just trip again and maybe it'll make sense? Now, you'd probably address these statements and questions in a much different way than the first group. Uh, this person is less about doing things immediately without thinking things through and they're reaching out for help in integrating their experience. So although the need to integrate in this person is no less important, they may need less support in integration, harm reduction, and they may need someone with therapeutic or integration training who can help them navigate the decision-making process. So beyond being a friend and supporting them through a harm reduction lens, if you feel that someone needs help that you cannot provide with a clear conscious, your only option is to support and refer. If you know a therapist or integration specialist, this is your time to introduce your journeyer and allow them to get the help that they need. Uh, at Silo Health, we're beginning to build a database of folks that we can refer out to. So hopefully we can help you in that process as well. Now, if you feel called to go deeper in integration work, there are a lot of paths to this type of wisdom and they all come with time and dedication. So whether that's through internships or apprenticeships, uh, higher education and therapy and relevant psychology or specific courses to built to help you how to understand to shepherd someone through their integration. Now, there are a lot of paths to a deeper level of commitment to this type of work. So choose them wisely so that they mirror your own values and experiences and steer clear of things that just don't feel right. Now, you're going to learn more about harm reduction with Isaiah in the next unit. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this brief overview of integration, an important part of the psilocybin experience. Till next time.